If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. I won Bryant McKinney very shortly, is on his way in route. Is he one or is he two? Yeah, he might be two, actually. It's funny, didn't you guys tell Terrence Cody that he was the biggest guy on the team until Bryant McKinney showed up? Yeah, I mean, he's like, just blocks you out. Like, if it's if it's me and Jameel McClain standing there and he's in front of us, like, you're not going to see either one of us. He's a whole right. lot of man. Just That's one it. dude. Hey, um, you know, a lot of times great players don't, I just I want to ask you this about Ray, since he was on the sidelines yesterday and talking to you guys. A lot of times great players struggle to be great coaches because they just want to say things like, well, just do it the way I would do it. Or something. you know, they, they get frustrated by guys that don't pick up the game the way that they do. What did you think of Ray sort of being a coach yesterday and not being able to just go out and do it, but having to sort of say, okay, here, this is something that I see that you should be doing. What did you think of him as a coach? Well, I think a lot of coaches ask you to do things that they could never do or that, you know, if you didn't really play football, it, it's not really possible to do, you sure. know, and they go, oh, this is how I want you to play your technique. You got to do, you know, you got to stay inside the guy, but if he runs out, you got to cover him out. But no, your leverage is inside. Like, no, that's not possible. And then, <laughs> I can't do that. And then you got, you, then you got players that could never be coaches because like you said, they're like, oh, just do it how I do it, you know? Right. I mean, I can't do it like you're the greatest ever. Correct. But then you have, you know, guys like Ray Lewis, just a selfless guy, and he's going to give you every tip, every trick you need to know. And he watched all the film as if he was going to play in the game, and he came up with all his own linebacker tip sheet and all this information. He was there ready just to divulge it to you. And so he's, he, he could definitely be a coach if he wanted to. And when you have a coach um, that actually played the game and knows what it's like to be out there with live bullets and in the trenches and – and knows how to get it done, then they're a little bit more credible. You can say like, okay, he's played, this is how he's coaching me, this can be done, versus a coach that's never played and they're telling you how to do things and you know it's not really possible to do what they're asking all the time. Was there any part of you that thought that he was gonna like run out with a cape on out of the tunnel before the game? Like, that even knowing that, look, this guy's not gonna play, but was there a little party that said, dude, he's like Superman. At some point, we're just gonna see him come out and he's gonna hit the field. I mean, in a fantasy world, like, yeah, but in the real world that we live in, you know, the inactives are, you know, before the game even starts, you know, you know who's inactive. Right. And you have a certain amount of hours before the game and you have to tell, you know, both teams who's inactive. So I knew like he wasn't going to come out on the tunnel and doing his dance, <laughs> All right. you know, in the real world. But, you know, that would have been awesome, right? It would have been still, even if he wasn't playing, it still would have been. If anybody could do it, Ray would have did it, right? right? So At least come out with a dance. If you can't play, Ray, come out with a dance and entertain us. You sure the NFL wouldn't just change the rules for him because he's Ray Lewis? You never know. You know, because Ray Lewis, the greatest of all time right there. Now, B, I want get something back to something you said a few moments ago talking about Cincinnati trying to copy some of the things that Seattle did the previous week how often does that happen I mean we hear all the time the NFL is a copycat league we saw it several years back with the Wildcat uh, heck we might start seeing it now with the new Tebow phase and everything but how often do you really see teams try to copy uh, what your recent opponents tried to do against you I mean, more than anything, a team is always going to be themselves more than anything, but they're going to always throw wrinkles into the game plan. So um, if a team was doing something the week before and it was successful, that's going to be in the game plan. They're going to give it a shot. You know, one or two times they're going to run it. And um, it's, it's that's just the way the NFL is. That's just the way football is in general. So you, you see it more than, than you would think. You know, you hear it, you know, the cliche, oh, it's a copycat league, but you actually see it more in teams throw their wrinkles in there. You just have to be able to identify it. Right. You know, you can't always identify it um, unless, you know, you're sitting there watching film or you're in the game and you really know. And, and something as, as sensational as the Wildcat, like, oh, that's obvious. You're going to take the quarterback, you're going to put him out at the receiver, and then you're going to take a running back or a receiver and put him at the quarterback. Right. Like, that's obvious to see. Everyone can notice that. Sure. You know, but there's other wrinkles where you know you, you can't really notice when they do it, but it happens. You know, whether it's special teams, offense, or defense, it happens in every phase. Now, with this being a short week, we talked about the accelerated learning curve of, of the game plan. Is it a condensed game plan this week compared to what you normally see? Just simply, you don't have the time to install as much and really study up. I mean, that's sensitive information right there. I mean, you, without, you're asking me to divulge without, without any giving away any. We, I mean, we already know that this is a real popular show, and the San Francisco 49ers are definitely <laughs> tuned in on WNS. Net. Right. So any information that I divulge here, they could use that against me. Right. So I can't comment on that, Luke. Come on. <laughs> All right, then. We might need a new co-host. <laughs> Nestor! <laughs> no, not Nestor. We're good. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we're going to be all right. Jim Harbaugh's in there saying, I hear what Brendan's saying. That's how we're going to beat him now. 
That's I hear that he just goes to you for everything. That's what I hear. I mean, it happens. You know, actually, when he was coaching at Stanford, he'd be on our sideline all the time. Right. And so um, if they had a bye week at Stanford or the season was over, um, Jim would be on our sideline. I'd see him on our sideline. All of a sudden, I see Coach Harbaugh throw a challenge flag. I see Coach Harbaugh talking to the ref. I see Jim right behind him. Oh, no doubt. We all remember the Green Bay game a couple right. years ago where it was all three of them, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was all, it was the whole Harbaugh family. <laughs> and then the next week... Saw the Harbaugh's, they couldn't go between the 30 and the 30. They couldn't, they like, the NFL called and they're like, yeah, the Harbaugh's can no longer right. be on the field right. during the game. Like, they got to be where everybody else is going to be, like, outside of the 30s. And I thought that was hilarious. We talked about last week when you faced your brother um, and what that meant and that whole, you know, when, when the whistle blows, we're on different teams and the whistle, when, when, when it stops, you know, we, we're still brothers and that whole thing. Right. Have you sensed anything about John? Have you sensed anything about him that says, this one maybe means a little bit more. Have you have you gotten that sort of gut yeah, feeling? Well, today is the first day we've even talked about the Niners, right? We, he mentioned it last week. He's like, you know, we, we talk about games and, and certain, you know, every game is in black print, but you see certain games like Pittsburgh or Bengals or Jets, like in your mind, that black print turns into red. So like your radar goes up for these particular opponents. But one of the games that he had commented that was a red, a red game was the Niners game. Like, so he had, he had mentioned that last week, but he's like, let's take care of the Bengals first. So like now we're here and um, this morning Coach Harbaugh, actually it was this afternoon when we were in our team meeting, Coach Harbaugh was talking. He's like, yeah, me and my brother, we used to fight all the time. And this kind of reminded me of me and, sure. me and my brother. Sure. And he's like, we used to beat each other up. And I was like, man, I bet Jim was kicking your butt. I didn't say anything. <laughs> he says he's a lot bigger than Coach Harbaugh. He's a lot bigger than John, you know? Like Jim's like 6'3", I don't know, probably 225 and and John's probably like 5'10", a buck 90. Sure. You know? it's, it's a lot smaller, so he's yeah. probably getting his ass kicked a lot yeah, right? as a kid, right? <laughs> so, um, so Coach was like, yeah, and my mom would be crying all the time telling us to stop fighting. He's like, I really want to win this game, guys. <laughs> so I guess he, he, from getting beat up so much when he was a younger kid, now it's his chance to, you know, finally win something. So we got a lot riding on this game. But I think the most important thing was uh, that Coach Harbaugh told us today is that um, it's going to be our family versus their family. You know, our team, our tribe, our Ravens versus them. And um, he, he got a little bit emotional. You could see it in his eyes. And he didn't say anything, you know, anything that blew us out of the water, but just you could feel like his chest was thumping. And he was like, we, we really got to win this game. And we know how important this game is. We know we still want to stay in first place and control the AFC and do all those things. And they're in, they're in second place in the entire NFC. So it's an important game for them as well to try to get um, home field advantage. So there's a lot riding on both teams, but I think we have a little bit more at risk than they do. You know, it's funny because you mentioned your mom rooting for both your brother, you and your brother when they play. Well, his parents are saying, we can't even watch the game. Yeah. We're going to come, we're going to show up for pregame, and then we're out. We, I mean, we can't do this. We can't handle this. It's a little bit funny to think about, you know, how all those things, they, they sort of play into each other, that this is really emotional for them, and you know because you played against your brother how difficult and emotional it can be to say, we just don't want either one of these guys to fail. I mean, it just, it hurts us to see one of these guys not succeed on the field. Yeah, I mean, like when I played my brother, like my brother could go score a touchdown or whatever, but as long as we won, it was fine, you know? This game, it's like one of them's fully going to lose and, and the other one's fully going to win and vice versa. So there's a lot riding for this for, for their family. But their dad's been a coach for, you know, his entire life, the whole lineage. The family is all about coaching. There's no way that Jack Harbaugh is not going to watch this football game now. <laughs> now, maybe, maybe um, the Harbaugh's mom, you know, Mrs. Harbaugh, she might not watch the game because those are her two babies out there, right? <laughs> but there is no way that Coach Jack Harbaugh is not going to watch this game. Guaranteed he's going to watch it. it might, I mean, it might be from TV. They might leave the stadium, but he's watching this football game. Do you see this to you right over here? you see this over in the corner? Do you see what just walked in the door? Look at that man. That's a big man over That's there. That's a man's man right there, baby. That's Ryan a real McKinney man. Ryan McKinney joins us next. <laughs> this is Monday Night Live. We're at High Tops. It's all brought to you by First Choice Automotive and Joppa. FCAutomotive.com. 410-679-0043. We'll take a quick break. We'll come right back. This is the station where we never stop talking. If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net.